Welcome, Ben Mama. Following on from the original Magnavox Odyssey, the very first home console which was designed by the one and only Ralph Baer and released in 1972, this follow-up was first released as the Philips Video Pack in Europe in December 1978, with the renamed North American Odyssey 2 following shortly afterwards in February 1979. It was also released in Japan in 1982, as well as Brazil some five years later in 1983 as the Philips Odyssey which is interesting as it combined the two names. It was also very successful in Brazil too, perhaps more so than it was in Europe and North America. Total lifetime sales for the console were a pretty respectable 2.2 million units, putting it in third place in its generation, just behind the Intellivision and way behind the Atari 2600. But despite these pretty impressive stats, the console doesn't seem to be very well known by today's retro gamers and so it's relatively cheap and easy to obtain and collect for. This makes it the perfect candidate for one of my amazing exclusives videos, where I hope to highlight 10 of its best games that are also exclusive to the system, which will surely encourage you to add one to your collection, just as I did some years ago in fact. Check the links in the description if you want to see my review of the video pack, footage of more games, or indeed my amazing facts video on the console. But I don't want to go into too much detail about its history here because that's well covered in the other videos that I just mentioned. This one is all about the games. So with that in mind, it's time to get on with the show as I proudly present 10 amazing Philips Video Pack and Magnavox Odyssey 2 exclusives. <laughs> Odyssey, video game fun, computer keyboard challenge, the entrance to an alternate world of fire-breathing dragons, hard-hitting sluggers, arcade wizards, outer space wizards, more than 40 games in all, Odyssey, the excitement of a game, the mind of a computer, all for the price of an ordinary video game, Odyssey. It's fair to say that the video pack hardware struggles a bit when it comes to delivering genuine arcade quality games. And even when it does, it's often just ripping off somebody else's game, as seen by the likes of P.T. Barnum's Acrobats, Gunfighter and perhaps most notably Casey Munchkin, which even led to a lawsuit from Atari. But in Freedom Fighter we have a genuine arcade style game that is also totally unique to the video pack and extremely enjoyable to boot. The game initially looks like the Williams Arcade Classic Defender with its horizontal viewpoint, small sleek spacecraft and a screen full of pulsating aliens. And there are some definite similarities, including a plot where you're supposed to be saving humans from being assimilated, hyperspace warps and the different alien types, which include pulsar ships and deep space mines. So the object of Freedom Fighters is to destroy all the ships and mines whilst rescuing the trapped humans from their spinning containment cubes. And that's it really. You have just one life to do this, so high score hunting is very much the order of the day here. Both the graphics and sound are great, and the fast action gameplay will keep you coming back for more time after time. over whether I should put this one in here, because it's not wholly original. But what makes this cartridge exceptionally cool is that it actually contains three different games, two of which are quite closely related and a third that's well, kind of a bonus game that is completely different. 
Now the first one, Speedway, which was called Race in Europe, but better known and remembered under the North American name, is often compared to the early Atari 2600 game Street Racer, but is much better in my opinion, especially as it's focused on a single player game rather than multiplayer. All you need to do to succeed in this title is race your car up the screen as fast as possible, for as long as possible, without hitting any other cars. As you drive, your score increases, and the ultimate objective is to score as many points as possible before your two minute time limit runs out. Hitting another car stops you dead and hinders this greatly. If you do want to race a friend instead, you can go and play the second game, Spin Out, which is a total rip off of Atari Sprint. And the third bonus game is a kind of simplified version of Hangman, but it's the fast and very fun Speedway that's the real star of the show here. Every system needs a good pinball game, and the Philips Video Pack and Magnavox Odyssey 2 are no different in this regard. Thankfully, Thunderball, or Flipper Game to use its incredibly boring and far less appealing European name, is exactly that. In fact, for such an early release, I was really impressed by what this game has to offer. It's certainly a lot better than Video Pinball for the rival Atari 2600, which was released around the same time. You see, this game has one really unique and original feature that I've never seen in any other pinball simulator, the ability to move your flippers from side to side. This effectively means that losing the ball is always your fault, taking out that unfair element of chance that these games always have. So you'll always have a gap between your flippers and one to either the left or right of them, but by moving them you can change where the gaps are, meaning it's always possible to return the ball to the playfield and keep on scoring. And speaking of scoring, there's plenty to hit here too, including bumpers, spinners and targets. Not to mention there's a great multiplayer mode in here too. Also known as Attack of the Time Lord in North America, probably because Philips only had the license for Europe, or simply because Terror Hawks wasn't a big thing on the other side of the pond, answers on a postcard, this game is interesting for several reasons. Perhaps most notably for being the only game on the system licensed from a TV show, in this case Jerry Anderson's popular 1983 puppet based children's sci-fi series that ran for three seasons. The second thing worth mentioning about Terrorhawks is that it makes extensive use of the brilliant voice add-on. In fact, it's probably the best companion to the accessory in all honesty. The game itself plays a bit like the Namco arcade classic Gallagher, as waves of enemies fly down the screen attacking you in formation and all you need to do is shoot them out of the sky. What's especially interesting here though is the way the enemies attack, as they drop several different types of projectile including missiles that have to be avoided, satellites that can be shot and drones that will chase you along the bottom of the screen if you don't shoot them in time. 
Terry Hawks is one of the best arcade style games available for the video pack and Odyssey 2. to say that Monkey Shines is one of the weirdest games I've ever played. In fact it's absolutely bonkers. But it says a lot about it that when I came to write in this list it was the very first video pack game I thought of. In essence it's a two player platform game where you compete against a friend in spanking the monkey. Ok so perhaps that's the wrong term but it made me laugh anyway. I'll try and explain things a bit better because even the video footage doesn't make it clear. You will see these naughty monkeys jumping and climbing around the many platforms on the screen. You have to try and catch these pesky primates. Once caught you have to tag them using the action button at which point you can throw them. And this is where it gets clever because once you throw a monkey it goes into a rage and then tries to tag you back. The player who tags the most monkeys before getting tagged back wins. So throwing them at the opposing player becomes a key tactic. There are also loads of different game variations to make things more interesting, including moving platforms and the ability to create your own. Monkey Shines is one of the best multiplayer games on the system. One thing I really love about the Odyssey 2 and Video Pack is that they have a lot of weird and wonderful games that you just don't find on any other console of the era. I already showed this with Monkey Shines, but I continue the theme with Killer Bees. This one is solely focused on a single player game however, and also makes use of the voice add-on, albeit in a pretty limited fashion. The plot of the game explains that Earth has been invaded by aliens who have brought a plague of killer bees with them to wipe out humanity and claim the planet for themselves. But both humanity and Earth's own bees are rather unhappy about this, so set out together to stop them. When the game starts you'll see the giant headed aliens striding around the screen with their swarms of killer bees in tow. Then you will see your own swarm that can be moved around the screen with the joystick. If you move over an alien it will slow them down initially before killing them completely. However their bees will try to stop you and any contact with the killer bees will cause you to lose a life. You aren't completely helpless though, you can stop these swarms by zapping them. This can only be used once before recharging, which will happen when you remove all the aliens and complete the level. This is fun, fast and very furious.
another brilliant multiplayer game for the Philips console, Smithereens, also known as Stone Sling and Catapult, depending on your country, was clearly inspired by Artillery Duel, one of the very earliest video games that was played on giant mainframe computers in American universities and also inspired the likes of Scorched Earth and Worms. Like those other titles, this game also features some pretty significant improvements on the original source material, which was actually text-based to start with. On the screen you see two small castle towers, separated by a moat, and behind each one is a knight armed with a catapult. The idea is to launch a cannonball at your opponent and try to take them out. The player with the most points after 10 rounds is declared the winner. You score 3 points for each hit on a castle, 7 points for hitting the opposing knight, and 10 points for hitting their catapult. The trick to this game is learning how long to hold down the fire button for, because that determines the power of your sling. There are also 3 gameplay modes that change the way the catapult fires to add a bit more interest, and it also has voice too. Smithereens might be a simple game, but it's also an incredibly fun one. Also known as Satellite Attack, why did Philips change the names of so many games when they were released in different regions? It does get very confusing. UFO could be described as a clone of the classic vector-based Atari arcade game Asteroids, but it also has a few rather unique quirks of its own. As soon as the game starts, you'll feel very much at home here. You have space rocks and satellites floating around the screen, enemy UFOs shooting back at you, and your ship of course. Then you simply fly around the screen shooting everything you see and trying to survive as long as possible. All very much like Asteroids so far, I'm sure you'll agree. But there are two very big changes that make the game feel very different. With the first of these being very obvious to anyone watching this video. The space rocks don't split into smaller parts. They simply disappear once shot. The second and arguably more major change comes in the way you shoot, as you have to rotate your gun into place rather than the ship like in Asteroids. This change makes the game much harder as you spend just as much time avoiding enemies as you do shooting them. It takes a while to master, but it's certainly worth it. be wondering why I've put the second game in here, and not the original Casey Munchkin. Well, I'm sure that many, if not most of you, will be surprised to learn that Casey Munchkin wasn't actually a video pack exclusive. It also appeared on the obscure Philips VG5000 computer too. Whereas the first game just straight ripped off Pac-Man, resulting in a rather famous lawsuit of course, this sequel is a lot more original. That does still have some influences from the Namco coin-op. In fact, a lot of people describe Crazy Chase as a cross between Pac-Man and Centipede, and they aren't far off the mark. The idea is to chase a multi-sectioned creature around a maze, trying to chomp all its parts. You can only chew on it from behind, however, any contact with its head will kill you instantly. 
Then there were the other enemies who also roam around the maze trying to kill you. But what is very clever here is that those centipede sections also act like power pills, allowing you to turn the tables and take them out. If you want to gain some bonus points you can also eat the trees, although this slows you down. This rightly deserves its reputation as one of the video pack's very best games. When you ask a lot of Video Pack and Odyssey 2 owners what their favourite game is, then a good portion of them will reply with Pickaxe Pete. And that is why I left this one until last. The game is often described as the O2's answer to Donkey Kong, which is perhaps a little unfair, because aside from being a platformer, there isn't really that many similarities. In the game you control the titular Pete as he tries to escape a mine he's become trapped in. Rocks are falling from the ceiling you will either need to avoid or smash with your pickaxe, however this tool can only be used a limited amount of times. If two rocks smash together, they'll create either a key or another pickaxe, whilst the latter is useful to help you survive, it's the former that will help you escape, as it allows you to enter one of the three doors. The problem is that these only appear for a short amount of time, so you have to grab them really quickly. As the levels progress, the flying rocks become more perilous, and the caverns become so dark you can't even see the platforms. Pickaxe Pete has some really nice animation for an Odyssey game and it looks even better if you have an enhanced G7400 video pack model. If you had an Odyssey 2 video game, you could be playing this game instead of just watching it. There are over 30 exciting, entertaining, and educational Odyssey games. And you don't have to buy any keyboard add-ons, because Odyssey gives you a complete computer keyboard. Odyssey 2, another bright idea from Magnavox. And that rounds up my look at 10 amazing Philips Video Pack and Magnavox Odyssey 2 exclusives. Can you think of any other one-off titles that only ever came out for this highly underrated 8-bit console? Or do you think some of these games weren't worthy of inclusion? I also love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comments section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my little patrons who continue to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to following Patreons and YouTube backers in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Paul Daniel, Mins, Dos Gamerman, Luke MC, Carl Olsen, Seth Robinson, Grady Haynes, Mark Strickland, Kalima Torn, Trogdor the Burninator, Daniel Skoronsky, Pen P. Stein, Tabby Kitsune, Alan J. Dodds, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. 
where you can get access to a host of extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.